Hey everyone, I am on vacation with my family and of course I brought some FPV gear with me. So I thought a fun project would be to test my waterproofing skills and see if I can turn this FPV drone into a pool toy. I'm gonna test it in this pool right back here. I'm gonna waterproof it as well as I can and then put it all the way in the water and we'll see what happens. With a little bit of luck, we'll be able to fly around in and on the water and we might even be able to see underwater, which would be super cool. Now I did something similar about a year and a half ago. If you've been watching this channel for a while, then you might remember that video. Uh, I took a 65 millimeter brush drone and I made it float and it was able to land on the water and take off again. And that was pretty sweet, but it was not completely waterproof. After just a few splashes, it would start malfunctioning. Sometimes it would refuse to arm after that. Um, and like a week later, I discovered that the motors completely seized up with rust because they were brushed motors. There was no way for them to dry out properly. And so that was a problem as well. This time the goal is to take it to a whole new level. I'm hoping that this will be so waterproof that we can play with it in the water for as long as we want. And it's got brushless motors. So if this thing can turtle on the surface of the water, That'll be a first and that'll be super cool. I'll show you the results in just a minute, but first let's back up because it took quite a bit of experimentation to get us to this point. Time to do some testing. I need to know if this video system is gonna work in the water. And so as a test, I just took this Whoop video transmitter. I coated it in conformal coating. It covers all of the wires and solder points. I did the same thing on the camera. Okay, let's put just the camera in it first. All right, the camera's underwater. We're still producing a video, that's awesome. I mean, that's awesome. It's just seeing underwater. All right, well, let me get a canopy on here and put it all back together and we should be ready to do a test. All right, it is time for the real test. I'm gonna put this in the water for the very first time and we'll see what happens. And this is pretty fun because I waterproof all of my outdoor drones. You just never know when it'll land in a puddle or even just wet grass, but I don't usually put them in harm's way on purpose. So you never really know how waterproof is it. Well, we're gonna find out how waterproof this one is right now. This drone is armed. It is on. So far, so good. All right, it is a new day. It's not as windy now, and I've got time to do some more testing. So today we're really gonna push the limits and find out just what this thing can do. Now, yesterday's tests were really successful. I could put it in the water, and I did that several times. Nothing has malfunctioned. Everything works perfectly fine, which is awesome. I could even put the camera underwater and look around underwater, which is super cool to be able to see underwater like that. Well, we lose FPV and control when it goes completely under the water. So it looks like we're gonna be confined to the surface, but that's okay. All we need now is a way to make it float. Well, my Shutterbug 85 is now officially a boat <laughs> and I've got two antennas on top. That's FPV and one of the receiver antennas and the other receiver antenna is on the bottom. Hopefully one of them will always be out of the water and we'll see if that's enough. surface. Uh-oh, uh turtle. Well, time to find out if we can turtle. As you can see, this foam is pretty thick and I've got the drone right at the top, which means that when it's floating on the surface, the props are actually out of the water already, which helps a lot. But when I went upside down, the props were all the way under and they were having trouble getting enough power to flip back over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust it to put this more in the center of the foam and see if we can turtle. Because if we can turtle on the water, that'll be super cool. Yes. All right, enough testing. Time to just have some fun with it.
Now, one question worth asking is actually, what danger does water pose in the first place? Uh, because water doesn't really hurt most of the electronics. Uh, in fact, the circuit boards are often washed in like a washing machine as part of the manufacturing process. So usually if a drone or pretty much any electronics gets wet, it's usually okay as long as it's dried out all the way before you plug it back in. And that's because the electricity is the real problem, not the water. Now, of course, water conducts electricity, but fresh water like this only conducts it a little bit. There's still quite a bit of resistance. So for example, if you had a power lead in the water and a little bit of current was leaking from one side to the other, that might drain your battery a little faster than normal, but it's not gonna cause a catastrophic problem. The bigger problems are gonna be in the more sensitive parts of the electronics. And that would be voltage from the five volt line or from VBET getting into the processor or into the OSD chip or into any of those lower voltage signal wires. That's where it could really fry something out and cause permanent damage, which is why we need to cover all of those electronics in silicone. You can see it's all wired up here. I've got the motors and the motors are direct soldered onto there and I've got some silicone conformal coating on those wire connections. You can see the flight controller down here is also very shiny because of the amount of silicone conformal coating on there. So really there's no way water should get in anywhere on there. Um, the only place where water would get in and might cause a problem is the USB. This of course has five volt power and it's got serial connections to the flight controller. So we don't want water getting in there. And for that, I am using dry drum. This stuff goes on, it dries super fast and it creates a water phobic coating at like a microscopic level. So it's supposed to keep the water off. And this stuff definitely works really well. I've never tried it though with a fully submersed drone. And so I'm not sure if it'll be up to the challenge, but I hope so. And that's what we're trying out. Dry drone on the USB connector. The receiver you can see in here is an XM plus receiver. And I did that so that I would have two antennas. I know sometimes I lose signal when these antennas go in the water. So with two of them, my idea is I can have at least one pointing up and one pointing down, but for now they're just coming out the end. You can see I've got a dab of silicone on the end of these as well. So the entire antenna is sealed. No part of it should touch the water. I've got conformal coating on the XM Plus receiver, but I didn't want to put that on the IPX connectors for the antennas because that conformal coating can just get right into connectors and ruin the connectors. So instead, this clear goop that you see on here is actually just clear silicone. This is the kind of stuff you would use to seal up an aquarium or a bathtub, and I've got that just caked on there. So today we'll find out if we can get video farther under the water. That would be pretty cool. All right, let's go under and see what we can see. Yes, there's the shark. Goggles. Yes. Okay, now for the real test, put it all the way under. No. Still losing video. Oh. So we've established that I lose video if the FPV antenna goes under, but what about the receiver? Uh, let's see if we can still get control. If it's all the way on the bottom, can we still bring it out? Let's see, I'm trying to arm. Looks like the answer is no. As you can see, I've got the power lead on here and it's gonna be two by one S. This is gonna be a two S drone because this is basically my Shutterbug 85 formula. But instead of going with an XT30, I decided to go with two by one S. And the reason actually has nothing to do with the connectors, it has to do with the batteries. If I had a regular 2S battery, I'd have to worry about both the XT30 and the balance plug, and there'd be a lot more uh, chance for moisture to get into the battery and the tabs and everything. But if I do it with these 1S batteries, I can just seal up the top of the battery. And that's what I've done. This is clear silicone sealing up the whole top of the battery. The only part where water can possibly get in is the end of this connector. And for that, I can even use uh, some silicone grease. This is the kind of stuff you would use on spark plugs. And this will not block the signal, but it will block the water. Well, it's kind of a bummer, but I have been having a problem with this right left motor or rather the ESC for that motor. Sometimes it spins up fine and sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if I arm it right now. There, you can see it's spinning okay. Yeah. 
Sometimes it just wants to do that twitch. So I don't know if that's water damage. My guess is actually that it's not water damage, but I may have overloaded the ESC at one point while thrashing around underwater. Underwater, there's a lot of load on these props that wouldn't normally be there, so who knows? Uh, but hopefully it'll keep working well enough to have some more fun with it before I leave this awesome place with the pool. Well, this has been a really fun project and I'm happy with how it turned out. I think this was quite successful. This one is really waterproof. I can sit in the water for a long time and still take off as many times as I want. You can even see underwater, which is super cool. The only real problem has been that front left ESC and that is kind of a bummer. I think I may have just gotten unlucky with that one because like I said, I really don't think that's water damage directly uh, because it can sit in the water for quite a long time and still arm just fine. Uh, when it has problems is when I try to troll through the water, where I'm fighting against the resistance of the water. And I think the ESC is actually overheating when that happens. And it'll start malfunctioning, and then if I just let it sit for a while, it'll work again. So that's too bad, but other than that, this drone has been working great. As far as corrosion, I have not seen any problems yet. The USB connector is doing fine, the power leads are doing fine. Most of the electronics, of course, are under silicone, so they can't get corroded. It's really just the motors that are in danger. And will they rust out? Will they seize up over time? Uh, I don't know, they might, but if they do, uh, it's totally worth it to me anyway. Uh, but my defense for the motors is I've been keeping them well lubricated, and the way I dry it out is I just fly around really fast through the air after I'm done playing in the water, and I've been doing that for several days already. This drone, of course, is a Shutterbug 85. That's a nickname that I gave to this formula, and it's still my favorite formula for a 2S Swoop. It's got 1103 motors and two inch props. If you haven't seen this formula before, then I'd encourage you to check out the other videos on my channel. And if you're interested in building one, I'll put parts down in the video description. And if you're gonna try waterproofing any of your drones, that's cool too, but of course your results may vary. You do so completely at your own risk. And please, please be careful because silicone conformal coating is actually really toxic. It has bad fumes, it spreads out, it can ruin connectors. So be sure to read the safety instructions and take that stuff seriously. Well, that's it. I am having fun. I hope you are too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there, everyone, and I'll see you next time.